Welcome to these videos on Chapter 2 of the Beginning iOS uh, 7 development for iPad and iPhone apps. In this video, we're going to take a look at your first iOS apps built using Xcode. If you don't have Xcode already, follow the details in Chapter 1, where you can learn how to download and install Xcode so that you can use it on your Mac. So in this first example, we're going to create a very, very simple app that gives you a button and a label. When you tap the button, text will appear on the label that says, Hello World. It's a very, very simple app, of course, but we're going to spend a little bit of time and quite a few pages of the book and a few minutes of this video on it. Because an app like this, despite its simplicity, it does implement many of the concepts of larger, more sophisticated apps, and it becomes a really useful learning tool. So don't be discouraged if you feel like you're doing a lot of work just to do a Hello World. So when you launch Xcode, you're going to see a screen such as this one, the welcome screen. And the welcome screen list some of the applications that you've built already. Here's some of the ones that I built while I was writing the book. And then, of course, there's these options to check out an existing project from a repository. You don't need to worry about that now or to create a new Xcode project. So we're going to select create a new Xcode project. And after a moment, the wizard will appear. So let me just move it into place so that you can see it in the recording. So you're going to be asked to create a template for your new project, and there's a number of different templates, but the one that you're going to use is the single view application. Now, a single view application, uh, think of a view in this way as a, a screen, so there's only one screen in the app. You're not going to be navigating between different screens, etc., etc. So to keep it simple, we'll say a single view application and press Next. You'll then be asked to give your uh, project some details. So I'm going to give the product name hello world underscore zero one. You can put the name of your organization in here as your, um, you know, your own name or whatever you want to do. Your company identifier is usually reverse domain name style. So I own the domain iOS7developer.com, so I'm using com.ios7developer. The class prefix, um, your app is built up of a number of different classes, and these classes can be prefixed with a, like a name in front of them. So say if you've got a class called Hello World 01, but in this app you want the Hello World 01 to be in a, what's called a namespace called Bob, you could create Bob as the class prefix, and then this class would be Bob.HelloWorld01, just so that it's not confused. Say, for example, if someone else called Jane is using a computer and creating a Hello World 01 class, then her class would be Jane.HelloWorld01. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as it is, leave it completely empty with XYZ. And then the devices, it can be an iPad app, an iPhone app, or a universal app. And a universal app is something that can be switched between the two. But to keep this simple, I'm just going to say an iPhone app, and then I'm going to press Next. So the next step, you'll be asked, where do you want to keep the application? And so I'm just going to, you know, it defaults to the desktop. It's fine just to put it there for now. You don't want your desktop filled with applications. So over time, you want to file them away. And then you have this thing called the source control. Um, there's Git is a tool that's used for maintaining source. So if you can imagine, like, if you want a repository to keep all your source code for all of your applications, Git is very useful for that. And then if you've got thousands of uh, items of source code and maybe you and some other people are working on it, what Git allows you to do is check it out change it, check it back in, and if you have it checked out, somebody else can't be changing it. But again, this is a single user building a simple application, so I'm just going to leave it unchecked. I'm not creating or using a Git repository. So I'm going to press Create, and my app will be created. And while it's working, I'm just going to resize my window so that you can see it all in the video. OK, so now Xcode has done its thing. And it's uh, opened up, and we end up in this view here, which I like to call the project view. And so when this uh, blue icon for your project is selected, and you can see all the code in there, and the little folder up here is selected as well. And it's still just working, processing files. I'm going to give it a moment to do that to finish off what it needs to do there. Now, there are lots of files in here, um, but the main ones we're going to be working on are main.storyboard and viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m. Um, if you're familiar with uh, C programming or C++ programming, um, you'll know that classes are defined using an implementation file, and the implementation file here is the .m. And, uh, sorry, they're implemented using the implementation file, and then there's also a header file um, where you define some of the data and all that that goes with them. If you don't understand that right now, don't worry about it. Um, you're going to be using these as you go through, but I'd also recommend, you know, once you've gone through this book a little bit and gotten your feet wet with um, building some applications, that it would be good to go back and do some language books for Objective-C so you can understand some of the finer nuances of working with uh, these files. 
So let's first of all create our Hello World app using the Interface Builder. And your interface is defined on the storyboard. So if I select main.storyboard, I'm going to get my little spinny wheel. That means it's loading the Interface Builder. And we'll see here that it loads. And here is my scene uh, within the View Controller. And this is defining what my interface is going to look like. So if I you know, start selecting around, we can see this scene itself is everything. Then the scene has a view controller. I got my blue outline for the view controller. There are some guides for layout. You can see the battery is within the top layout guide, and there's some at the bottom as well, so that if you, you know, for the power and stuff like that. And then there's the view itself, and the view is where you're going to be defining everything that you're working on. Uh, so the view defines what an interface should look like. But I'm going to select view controller at the top here so that I have the blue outline. So next what I want to do is over on the right hand side of the screen here is the utility area. So whatever I've selected, I have um, properties for that. And at the bottom here, there's this scrollable list of controls. So controls are you know, defining the, just the UI widgets that you're going to be able to put onto your screen. So for Hello World, I want to put a label. Um, on my view, and you see if I select a label, this little hint pops up and tells me, you know, what a label's all about, what a label can be used for. So if you want to learn some of the controls, you know, these hints are very, very useful for you to do that. So I'm going to take the label, and using my mouse, I'm going to drag it. Whoops, just get the hint out of the way. I'm going to drag it and drop it on my view, and you'll see the label drops here. And as I move it around, you see this, those dotted lines. They call it guidelines. Um, that I can use for sizing it. And then if I resize it with these, we'll see little blue lines pop up. And the blue lines define the margin. So I don't go too far over the margin and have an antisocial app that, you know, my app works within the guidelines of where the view should be as defined by Apple. So you can see the blue lines show me the margins and the center and that kind of thing. So I've dragged my label out now. So it's the full width that I should use with proper margins. You see it um, it goes up against those blue line margins. So that's quite a nice little label that I've gotten there. So next thing, what I want to do is to add a button. So I have my button here. And in iOS 7, the buttons are much flatter than uh, in previous versions of iOS. So it kind of looks like a label. Um, but it's a label that I can perform actions on. And as I drag the button, you see I get the blue line to show me centering. So I thought, that's nice. I'll drop it there where it's centered. Now, of course, my label says label and my button says button. So let me just change these a little bit. I'm going to take label. And if I come over here onto the right hand side, there's these little icons that I can click. So like you can see here, I've got help. I've got custom class. I've got this is the attributes inspector for the label. And you know these are also used for defining where it appears on the screen. But I'm going to put attributes on here. And you'll see attributes, there's a text type. And then there's the text within the label. So I can say. Hello viewers in here, and we'll see the label updates to hello viewers. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the label empty, and now it will disappear. Or the text will disappear, the label's still there, but it's actually empty. And on my button, I'm going to select that. And same thing now within the attributes inspector, I can see the text for my button is there. So I might say something like, press me. And now look what happened. Um, I got P dot 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 E exclamation. That's because the, li the button wasn't wide enough to handle this text. And uh, the iOS is smart enough to truncate it. But what I can do is I can change the width. And now it's wide enough. And if I drag it around, I get my little blue line that helps me to center it. So I now have my Press Me button. So what am I going to do next? So next, uh, let's um, first of all, let's save our work. So you can use the command save, or command S to save. This is the command button. S to save, or of course, you can just say File Save. So I'm just going to save my work before I continue. Now, one thing that you're going to be using a lot is called the assistant. And the assistant is this little guy up here with the tuxedo. So what I'm going to do is if I press that button and wait a moment, the assistant window will open. OK, so now the assistant window has opened. And I still have my sidebar here. So it's looking a little confusing. So if I press this one, it will get rid of the sidebar so I can just see my assistant window. Now, one of the things that it's it get a little confusing at first, and you have to be really careful to make sure that you do it properly, um, or your code is going to get very, very confused, is that you notice here that when I opened the assistant window, it opened it to viewcontroller.m. Now, when I'm using the assistant to create what's called outlets and actions, which we'll, I'll show in a moment and I'll explain in a moment, I want to do them with viewcontroller.m. 
h and not viewcontroller.m. So you can select it here and say viewcontroller.h. That's much better now, so I can start doing things on viewcontroller.h. And if your screen is a little cluttered like mine, you can resize it like this. So I can do this. So now I can see my interface here, and I can see my assistant window here with viewcontroller.h in it. Perfect. So um, as I was mentioning earlier on, the h file contains all the information about the class, so names of functions and variables and all that kind of stuff used within it is in there. The m file is the implementation that contains all the logic. So what I want to do is create what's called an action now. And in iOS, an action is something that happens in response to a user input. So here, if the user presses the button, an action should take place. So what I want to do is if I hold down the control key on my keyboard, I can't see it, in, you can't see it in the video, but if I hold down the control key on the keyboard and then drag the button, we'll see this little blue arrow starts coming out. And if I drop it over here, you'll see a hint that says insert outlet action or outlet collection. I want to create an action. So I'm going to drop that and this little window pops up. Now in this little window, it says, okay, I know I'm creating a connection now. What kind of connection am I creating? Well, it, there's an outlet, there's an action, and there's an outlet connection, a collection. In this book, we're going to be using outlets and actions extensively, but you're not going to use outlet collections. So for now, I want to create an action. So remember I said an action is something that happens when the user has done something and we want to you know, write code in response to that. So in this case, the user, the user has pressed the button, and so I want to create an action. And I can give the action a name, so I'm just going to call it button pressed, like so. And um, the action happens upon the user doing an event. Now, there's lots of different events they could do on a button. So if I select this one, we can see all the different things that a user could do with a button, like editing it, touch down, repeated touch down, dragging something over the button, dragging something out of the button, etc. But the most common thing you're going to do with a button is just pressing it. And the best thing um, to the best way to detect that is with the touch up inside. So touch up inside fires, if you can imagine that, when the system on the iOS device determines that you've lifted your finger off of it. That's a touch up. And you've lifted your finger off of the screen while your finger was on the button, is the classic example of you've pressed the button. You could, for example, have put your finger on the button, moved your finger off the button, and then lifted it, in which case the touch up doesn't actually happen inside the button. You could have put your finger on the screen, moved your finger over the button, and then lifted it. And that would detect that you've actually pressed the button. So touch up inside is the best one for managing, you know, pressing a button and detecting pressing a button. So I'm going to connect, and then we see this IB action button pressed gets created for us. Great. This is exactly what we wanted, and we're going to write code to handle that um, in just a moment. But before we do that, the other thing that we need to do is called creating an outlet. So what an outlet allows us to do is refer to one of our controls from within our code. Now, problem is, I made the label empty, so as I click around, there it is. It's kind of hard to spot. The other way I could do it is by looking at the scene here, I could select the label in the scene, and now it's selected for me. So it's good to use this uh, little menu on the left sometimes if you can't find your controls. So same thing, I'm holding down the control key, and I'm dragging and I'm dropping onto the .h file in the assistant. And when I let go, the same little window pops up. So I want to create, in this case, an outlet. So like I said, what an outlet allows you to do is give your control a name, and then you can use that name within your code. So right now, if I'm writing code within viewcontroller.m, it has no idea what this label is. This label is just a definition. Until I create an outlet for it, so I'm going to call it my label. So I've created an outlet called my label once I press connect. And we'll see here now that it creates this thing called a property. And this property is an outlet of type UI label. You'll see UI a lot in front of things. So UI controls tend to get prefixed with UI label. And so I've created an outlet called UI label and I've called it my label. So let's go in and write the code now that we're going to write for this one. So remember earlier I said the implementation is in the M file. So if I go and select the M file, now the M file opens up within this area. And it's nice that the assistant stays open so I can see the H in there. So instead of the main client area having the storyboard, it now has a viewcontroller.m. And we'll see that it has created this thing for us called BTN Press. That wasn't there earlier. When I created the outlet, 
using the assistant called BTN pressed here. Um, this code, uh, this function was created for me, this action, uh, BTN, sorry, I created an action, not an outlet, this action code called BTN pressed was created for me. So I can now start writing code in here. So what code am I going to write in here? I just want the text to say, uh, the label to say, hello world. Now, if you remember from here, we called the label my label. And one thing that throws off people a lot is that when I want to refer to that in code, I don't call it my label, I call it underscore my label. And you see, as soon as I type the underscore there, then this hint popped up of all the possible things that could be beginning with an underscore. And then I typed an M and all the possible things, underscore M. You see, there's tons of them. But it was also smart enough to say, hey, look, you know, he's writing an app and he created my label in it. So he probably wants my label. So I can like click on it in there and get my label filled out for me. Or I can press tab and tab again and have it filled out for me. I can do whatever I like. So now my label, I want to do something with it. Now, when I want to address like something on my label, like, for example, earlier we set the text using the editor. I'm typing dot. And now a dot text is how I can address the text within code. So as you notice there, as I did the video, I typed the dot key. And um, this menu came up giving me hints for the types of things I can do. And I'm like, well, I do, some, what I want to do is something like the text within it. So maybe if I type T, I'll go, OK, all, here's all the stuff that begins with T. The most likely one that begins with T you want to use is the text. And I can press tab, and it fills out text for me. So I can say that. Now I want it to say, hello, world. Now in computer language, text is done using something called a string. So if I type a string like that, hello, world, and put a semicolon, all lines have to end with a semicolon, I have a little bit of a problem. This red underline tells me there's a bug here, there's a problem. And the problem that I have is that strings in Objective-C, you have to always prefix them with the at character. And I didn't do that. If I delete that at character, and we'll see that red underline happens again, showing me there's a bug. And I can come over here and I can click on it. And it gives me like a hint to say, hey, look, incompatible pointer types assigning NS string from char 13. You, if you don't understand what that means, it's like, I don't I don't blame you. It's, uh, it's pretty obscure. But again, Xcode is smart enough to say, you know what, I think I know what this is. This often happens when you forget the putting the at in. So it says, hey, look, you can fix it by inserting an at. If I double click on that, it actually inserts the at for me. So it's a very intelligent tool that helps you to do a lot of this stuff, which is really, really nice. So let's run our application and take a look at it. And if we do that by coming up here, and we can see here's my application name, and here's where I want to run it. I can drop this down and see all the other devices within the iOS simulator I can run it in. And if I have a device attached, it will appear here with its name. There's no device attached right now. So I'm just going to say, OK, 3.5 inch iPhone Retina. Let's see what it would look like on that. And if I press this button here, like a play button, you'll see now that the app is building. And um, it does all the linking. The build will succeed. And then the emulator will launch. The simulator will launch. I have it launched here. I'm just going to change the size of it so we can see the whole thing on the screen. So if I move it down to 50%, here's the simulator. It's going to take a few moments for the simulator to boot up and then for the code to be deployed to it. Now it has booted. We can see the iPhone screen. The code has been deployed. My app launches. And now my app is actually launched. And we can see roughly what an iPhone would look like. We have the time. We have the battery meter. We have like the carrier here. It might be AT&T or whomever. My label was empty, so I see nothing. And I see press me. So if I use press me, now the label says hello world. And that's it. Very, very simple. But the idea was here to demonstrate um, some of the very, uh, the, the, how the tool works, some of the concepts that you're going to be using extensively, like outlets and actions, and using a storyboard. And this was done to, you know, it, when we go over, this was done to just demonstrate a very simple application. And but to, in this, we looked at project structure, we looked at storyboards, we looked at managing user input via actions, you looked at uh, programming user interface using outlets, there were headers, there were classes, you worked with a view, um, automatically generated stubs and prototypes. So the code, if you remember, this was automatically generated for us on BTN Pressed. Uh, you've written your very first line of Objective-C code, which was my label.txt equals hello world. We ran uh, the application in the simulator and a whole lot more. So it's very simple, but you covered a lot of concepts. 
understand if you're very new to iOS development that it might seem a little bit overwhelming, but don't worry as you step through the book and as you step through these videos, you'll be learning these through repetition and you'll be picking them up. So thank you and I'll see you in chapter three.